Hello, welcome to JD Podcast Season 2. My name is Eva Javeri and our guest for today is Ms. Meher Sahani. <laughs> and she's the HOD at the JD Institute of Fashion Technology. So, Ms. Meher, what can you tell us about yourself? So, um, currently I'm heading the fashion department at JD Institute of Fashion Technology, Mumbai. Apart from uh, being uh, a part of JD, I have... Uh, been in the industry for around 10 years now. So juggling between designing, having my own label with my best friend, then uh, my own label to work. And then I shifted gears into styling and then eventually I realized that, okay, I think teaching is my calling. So here I am now. That's nice. So tell me one thing, what made you choose or enter the fashion industry? What clicked you that I want to do fashion? So I know it It sounds like, um, you know, everyone says it like I was good at art and craft or I like drawing, that is why I got into fashion. But I think it was a different kind of love which I had for clothes at a very early age. Okay. And uh, this particular um, time in my eighth grade is when, which is like a very vivid memory I have. Uh, one of the kids were brands, if I'm not wrong, uh, Ruff had and uh, had a competition, okay. a pan India, where you know we were just supposed to cut out different silhouettes, okay, and then stick them, pair them together, and you know render them. Wow. And I was the winner, pan India, and that is when I thought that okay, art and craft, yes, but what can I do with art and craft and my love for clothes together, so. That vision was very clear in the eighth grade that I need to do something related to garments. Oh, wow. So that is, I That's think. That's only age to see that yes. you want to do something. And then, of course, after 10th grade, when I did my commerce, I knew that after that, I wanted to do a degree in fashion. Nice. Uh, so tell us your journey in JD. How was your experience? Did you as a HOD also learn something? So at uh, JD, I can say so far the journey has been very pleasant. Total. So uh, the environment, the work environment is such that when we say it is JD family, we mean it. We, we are there for each other and that I think is much more than uh, any work ethic anybody can teach you. Like you treat each other with respect. So that yeah. is something I really like about the JD environment and my colleagues, obviously my seniors as well. Mm -hmm. So that is something which I really want to inculcate in the industry, which they say is a tough industry. Right. It's cut through competition, but I think the way forward is collaborations. So you see that in JD family and of course after becoming the head, I feel it is my responsibility also to inculcate that culture of yes. helping each other out wherever possible. And taking care of everything. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. It's a give and take is what I yeah. feel. So, Okay, so when, when you were studying fashion in your degree, what is the one, how has the fashion industry evolved when you were studying as a student and now when you are teaching the students, how has it evolved? Okay. So the industry, I feel, has become more fast-paced. Okay. Uh, the trend cycle, the fashion cycle, now you see that the uh, stores, especially high street fashion brands, right. have collections in the fortnight. Mm. So the consumer is spoiled for choice. If you see the early 2000s and the 2010s when I was a student, it was not uh, that fast-paced. It was, but the rate at which fashion is changing, evolving, the way um, technology is evolving, it has had a very impact, like it has been impactful in impactful, the right. fashion industry, the technology, if you see the fashion shows, mm. AI now I feel is going to impact the fashion yeah. industry. So let's see where it takes us. Oh, I had one more question. Um, do you think that the old fashion trends are coming back in today's time and they're going to take over it again. Yeah, so this is something I tell the students also and I know it sounds funny, but the future is history. In 
fashion right. history just keeps repeating itself. Mm-hmm. It is just done in a different manner. There's a different take on it, say, supposing bell bottoms or if you say your low waist jeans. So it's just a different take on the same trend. There's nothing new or invented in the fashion industry. It's just reinvented. Right. At regular intervals and that regular interval is becoming shorter day by day. Right. So yeah. <laughs> so what does fashion mean to you? Fashion for me, I feel at an early age is what I learned was a way of expressing how I feel. Okay. Like it's said many times, but it's seldom uh, understood or actually in you know, practiced in day-to-day life. Like if I wear dull clothes, it is because I'm actually feeling dull. It's like if you see me uh, day-to-day at the institute, Mm -hmm. if I'm wearing a bright color, I'm usually choppy. If I'm wearing a dull color, because it has color psychology. Mm -hmm. I have, you know, consciously chosen that color from my wardrobe because that is how I felt in the morning. Yeah. It's always been a way of expressing myself. If I'm confident wearing what I am, I portray myself in a more confident manner is what I feel. So fashion for me, in one word, I can say is self-expression. Right. So uh, you previously mentioned that you have a label with your best friend and you have your own label also. What can you tell us about that? So, um, just after graduation, I think my friend and I were very clear that we want to start something of our own and we, like, head, like, straight, we just went for it. And uh, things were good, uh, it was a successful brand, but uh, then, of course, we we were too young to understand how to keep our professional and personal life separately. And Touchwood, I can proudly say that she and I are still sisters not even best friends is because we didn't know how to draw the line between personal and professional life so we just thought we should keep it separately we can work elsewhere with someone else we can work alone but we cannot have that bond both like i don't have a sister by blood but i can proudly say that she's my sister so that bond i don't think i would have been able to build with anyone else so it was either her or work so I chose her over Mm -hmm. that and then um, of course I went on with my own label but then the pandemic hit so now I've discontinued that work I'm only full-time concentrating being the head of the (laughs) part it has other sort of uh, responsibilities other than teaching so I'm very occupied with that at the moment sure so if not in the fashion industry, what would have you become? I think about it a lot, actually, because I have changed professions within the industry, right? Being a designer, then being a stylist, then being a faculty. Right. Then again, I went back to doing my master's and then coming back to teaching. Oh, wow. This decade has been a lot of changes, but then I feel what, if not fashion, then what? I think about it a lot and then I think the only answer which comes to my mind is I would have been a maths teacher. So, yeah, I know, I know it comes as a shocker, but my core subjects, if you see pattern making, grading and draping, they are hardcore, you need to know maths. We teach fractions to the first year students in fashion because they've forgotten how to add and subtract fractions, they don't know the denominator needs to be the same. So I feel a part of me still feels that I'm a maths teacher. So that was my backup plan since I think fifth grade. Wow. (laughs) I always had a backup plan that if I don't do anything in life, I'm going to sit at home and take maths tuition. Let's see, maybe when I'm 60, I do that. Oh my, that's amazing. So you mentioned about pattern making and draping. So what exactly is pattern making and draping? So uh, what I tell students on day one is that um, if you've seen engineers make technical drawing or if you have studied technical drawing in ICSE schools, it is similar to that. It is a geometrical pattern. You take precise measurements either of the drape form or if your client or as per standard body measurements, your small, medium, large. Mm. You take that and you actually make a geometric flat pattern on a brown paper or newspaper, any right. paper for that matter. You make a pattern from which you cut, like you use that pattern to cut it 
cut the fabric basically yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's very technical and getting the fit right i feel is much more important than the design itself a simple design can look great if it fits well mm. and a beautiful design will look crappy on a client if it does not fit well and the client will not be comfortable wearing it right. and uh, draping is you can say like a sister concern basically where okay. you make the pattern in 3d on the drape form okay so again it's a technical subject right um okay so tell me one thing how do you think the podcast will help our audiences or our student to lead forward like to educate themselves will it will, it, will a podcast help them do that so i think our podcast season 1 and now season 2 is uh, not just restricted to fashion right it i think will help a person develop uh, as a human right like a holistic approach right. to be like this one is an insight to the fashion industry to my life to my journey and what pattern making and draping is but the other podcast are talking about uh, women empowerment and all sorts of no. society issues also so they get an insight not just about the fashion industry or what they might learn if they do a degree or a diploma in fashion but as a human how to evolve and face the society right. and i feel that is very important in today's day and age where most of the youth is struggling with mental health right since so the podcast is a good way to contribute to the society definitely it is because if they see people uh, confidently talking about their personal struggles they can see that okay other people's life is not all green <laughs> there are black days there are gray days as well and all of us have gone through our own struggles yeah. so when they see the struggle in the journey is when they can get a reality check and maybe learn a thing or two in months so are talking you about struggling in your entire journey of a decade that you're talking about is there any time when you thought that i'm struggling or and if you face the very big challenge and how did you overcome it so i feel it's been a roller coaster this entire decade like i told you that i am dabbed tried to find my true calling within the fashion industry right. cuz early on i knew that i want to be a part of the fashion industry but i never really knew what part okay on designer designer okay i dealt with it i tried my hands at it and then you went for styling yeah and uh, styling was really fun like till today i like styling myself you know my relatives whatever but uh, the working hours the stressful life i felt that it's not for someone like me it would take a toll on my mental health down the line okay and it did for a period i was down mentally and and with that i felt was a dark period okay there was another dark period when my best friend and i had to give up a successful <laughs> you know like till today we get calls because our numbers are still there on the visiting cards or some carry bag and okay i was still doing it where can we come to see us of we're like okay i i'm not doing that anymore mm-hmm. so having to let go of a successful brand was uh, difficult for both of us mm-hmm. and maybe i took it more badly because of mental health issues or whatever that was so there have been dark phases but then today knowing that i'm not impacting only my life i might out of 10 students impact even one student's life right. out of 10 even if that ratio is as small as 1 is to 100 i'm going home happy yeah that i have helped someone achieve their dream you know right. so i think maybe now mentally i'm more at peace so now being in being in the faculty being in hod has brought peace to you now finally yeah work pressure no <laughs> i was kind of making uh, sure that okay i'm helping a student the student is you know learning something i'm helping them mold the our future right. you know i'm nurturing young talent is something which i feel really proud of because having worked with many people in the industry having worked work with you know uh, other faculties i've realized that it's not everyone's cup of tea right everyone does not have the patience or does not have um that ability to actually teach 
Hmm. They might be very good at their craft, but explaining how you achieved a process is not everyone's cup of tea. And then that sense of sort of achievement and also that gratitude when you see from the students, it's pure joy. Like when they see their garments on the ramp, it's like I'm reliving my, yeah. you know, uh, life as a student where I was proud that, to see my designs come to life. So has fashion changed you in any type of person or anywhere? Do you feel that this is because of fashion this happened? Or it changed me in this? I think the days where I feel that I don't feel like getting out of bed or I feel down, mm -hmm. I try to dress up. Because like I mentioned earlier, like in, I feel that I am dressed well, I am more confident. Right. So that has like sort of had a psychological effect on me. Like the days I have to have a big presentation or I have to stand in front of the stage and talk to 300 people is when I have to put in that extra effort of dressing up. Right. So fashion has, an, has a direct impact, I can say, with my psyche. So without fashion, I think maybe I wouldn't be so confident. Fair enough. Uh, we are having our JD Design Awards coming up very soon in a month. Uh, so can you tell us something about that? So I am super excited to be a part of GDDA again and all of us, the mentors, are so excited with all the hard work which the students have put in. And especially with every year, we are becoming more strict about the sustainability right. aspect of you know, GD Institute, right? because we believe in sustainable, ethical, and innovation. innovation, of course. So innovation is something which I think the students take care of it themselves. But we have to restrict them and tell them that, okay, the future is to a sustainable fashion. So with the guidelines becoming more strict year by year, and the students still out doing what they thought they could do on day one. Yeah. Because they're like, oh man, so many restrictions, we can't use this, we can't use plastic, we can't use nylon. Because we can't. the fabric gets restricted. Yes, yeah. fabric, the ornamentation, the right. styling, all of it is very strict this year. Mm -hmm. So we are super excited about it. Right. So, so, next year. so what does exactly happen in this fashion show? So uh, GDDA is not just like a one day event. It okay. might be a one day event to... Uh, you know, the outsiders or for people who are just coming to view the show, but like it is a three month long process. Exactly, yeah. Which happens before that one month of GDD events at yeah. the main show. So if you see, it's actually a four month process mm. where the theme announcement is there, the students get to choose a sub theme, okay. they work in groups, they understand teams, how to work in a team. It's not easy for everybody to just with and then come up with you know a good collection yeah we, they are constantly being guided by their mentors okay this color combination this surface ornamentation yeah. this pattern making <laughs> technique would help so it's a constant to and fro they are used to getting redos by now four redos ten redos yeah. because we need to push them for quality That's true. the first ten sketches they come up with rejected so yeah. They feel that, oh, we, we didn't do enough. They did enough what they thought was good, but we know what they are capable of. They are mm -hmm. capable of achieving more. Right. So when you were studying, did you also have any fashion shows or did you also make any garments that were used for yes. a fashion show? Yes, we did. And uh, I was also uh, very grateful. I had a good mentor in my, okay. one of my faculties who did push us. She used to be like, Mehed, no, I know you're capable of doing more. I ring, ma'am, no, this is the best I can do. And and I'm glad that she did that because yes. I am what I am today because of the my push. professors. Yeah. Because they pushed me to think wow. very differently and beyond the limits of the box which I'll put myself yeah. into. You could like they more. they say think out of the box, but they actually pushed me and they said that why the box think out of this world yeah so that is how you create designs which can later get patented because your faculties are pushing you to think beyond what has been done or what could be done by others and now you're doing the same thing to your students and you're like 
telling them also to think out of the yeah. world and look, to yeah. make a better design. When they get a redo, I don't tell them that, okay, this is terrible. You get, you take it as constructive feedback. No. You think of it as, okay, I have done this, what else can I do? Yeah. This is done, mm-hmm. this is gone. Don't try to rework it. What else can you produce? In your lifetime, are you capable of producing only 10 designs? No. Right? You're capable of producing more. So think and think and explore and inspiration can come from anywhere. Yeah. So think, look around, travel, speak to people, interact. So interaction is very important is what I feel. Okay, I think we're done for that. Thank you so much, Ms. Mayasani. And we'll come back with another episode soon. Thank you.